All right, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> we out here. Uh, it's not a bad day today. It's, it, it looks pretty good today. And it looks like we're going to get an opportunity to again, once again, do our chatting and walking and walking and chatting. And remember, we're doing this walk uh, for our health. Uh, uh, you know, walking is good for the health to bring down sugar, my sugar and all that to promote healthy heart and all that great stuff. Uh, my wife be real busy and uh, right now she going to the doctor to get a procedure on her hands and can on. Uh, I prefer to do it with her, but she be real busy and she get enough exercise. <laughs> she ain't the one that needed. My wife get plenty of exercise. If she was to count her steps, use one of them machines, you know how you use on your telephone or people put it on their wrists or whatever to count them steps, my wife probably walk a million steps in a week. Now me, myself, oh, that's on another hand. So I need to get out of here and do me some walking, some exercise. She told us uh, a good 15 minute walk equals a mile. So we out here walking and chatting and chatting and walking. All right, now we do have a topic. We remember that we gave a topic for our chatting and walking and I hope you all been meditating on it because it's it was a powerful question that we asked and the question was hold on for one minute here I want to make sure that I'm fast enough pretty good okay Ooh, I forgot about the question was Um, what is it that you can give God that he don't already have? What could you give to God that he already don't have? That he don't already have? Now, I know a lot of people have been told uh, in your Christian walk and, and, and things that they told you there's nothing that you can give God. Because God owns it all. He owns all the cattle on the hills. He owns the hills, the mountains, and the valley. God owns all the gold and all the precious gems and, and all of those silvers and all of those things that's material is already belong to God. The Bible even tells us <laughs> that he bought us with a price. We've been bought with a price. And that price was the blood of Jesus Christ. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what is there possibly that we could give to God if God owns it all he owns the sky he owns the fish in the sea oh what is it that we can give to God that God don't own already well I want you to put this key point down in your memory listen whatever it is it has a reaction that God confirms that he got it. Whatever it is, it has a reaction by God to confirm that he has it. <laughs> now, we have to look at the, the baseline uh, scripture to this. And that baseline scripture I want y'all to go to is Hebrews 
chapter 12, verse number 7. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 7. Now, I want you to understand that God disciplines his people. Oh, he going to discipline. If they his, he's going to discipline. As you being a parent, oh, you discipline your children. Now, for some instances, it's just a little mild speaking to, don't do that no more. In some instances, you have to give a, a little stronger talking to. Some instances, you have to... Uh, take some things away that they like so they can get the full measure of what you're trying to say. In some instances, uh, especially if they young children, some instances, you have to have a little firmness with it in order for them to grasp the whole reality of the situation. It's all type of forms of, of discipline that is righteous discipline. We're not talking about all that old splitting open heads and all that. I ain't talking about that kind of discipline. That ain't discipline, that's abuse. I'm talking about a, 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 a discipline that you would give your child to affirm in them that this is something that they need to get. This is something that they need to learn. This is something that's going to help them. So in that, we see in Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 7, that God disciplines his children. But that is the reaction of what God wants from us. You see, there's something that God wants from you and I that goes throughout the entire Bible that he did all he could to get it from his people. And that's obedience. Let me, let me break this down for you. If you try to find, I know some people say, well, God wants our love and all of this here. But your love is proven by your obedience. In John chapter 14, the Bible says that Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. Now, if you look throughout the whole Bible, <laughs> throughout the whole gospel, Jesus only said that he loved the Father one time. If you go to John chapter 14, <laughs> verse 31, You'll see that, that I love the Father. But he also say in there, and I do as he commands me. You see, he equates his love with his action, his obedience. Now, you got to understand now, he said that he was his father over 180 times in the scripture. He always called him his father. He, he always recognized him. He always said that I come to do the will of him who sent me. He always acknowledged God. But it was through his obedience, the Bible says, that he humbled himself. And he and became uh, less than an angel. He became a man. And he did this unto the he obeyed unto the death of the cross so now I want you to get this obedience because a lot of times we don't get the grasp of it we, we just look at it as somebody telling us what to do and Lord knows we can't stand that sometimes sometimes it go against everything we have been taught everything we believe through all of our experiences and circumstances and all of this so the Bible lets us know that the word obey and obedience is said over 800 times in the Old Testament and it's also said over 80 times in the New Testament. But watch this. In the Old Testament, when you see the word obey, 
It means listen. Listen. See, you can't do if you don't listen to what's been told to you to do. Listen to what I'm telling you. Because in the Old Testament, every time they was mentioned and obey, they was also letting them know the consequences if you don't do this. Are you listening to me? If you do this, you will receive this. If you don't do this, you're going to receive that. Now, that's a powerful thing. Now, as well, in the Old and the New Testament, we know it means to follow what I am saying, to do what I am saying. So, if we listen and follow and do what God is saying, then there is a reaction. Now, understand, not to do it is a reaction as well. And it's that not doing that I really want to talk to you about. I want you to uh, get a grasp on what it feels like sometimes for us to go against God, for us not to follow God's way. Uh, We could do this simply uh, by looking at a man that was after God's own heart. We gonna check out David. And David was after God's own heart. He was a man that really knew God. And we gonna look at one of, one of the seven pentatone psalms. In other words, a psalm where David poured out his heart and poured it out because of the sin that was in his life. You see, we got to call it what exactly what it is. Disobedience is sin. So if we look at Psalms chapter 6, we're going to see David pouring out his heart. And I want you to get this because it is a powerful thing. It is a beautiful thing to see. Look at the first verse. The first verse says, well, I'm trying to get it here. Listen, he starts off with verse 1 and 2 as he cries out unto the Lord. Lord, forgive. Hear me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. Lord, I am in such distress. I am in such hurt. I am in such pain because of the sin that he feels. He even says in verse number three, listen, Lord, not only am I in such distress and such hurt and in, in such a down position that my bones and my soul hurt because of the sin. And that's a powerful thing for you and I to recognize. Listen, you can tell a child of God because when they sin not against you or me but they know that their sin is against God Almighty himself because it is God that judges so they know when they sin against God they should have a conviction it should be a conviction when we are disobedient unto God David says that he feels some type of way because of the disobedience in his life. 
And it continues on in, in verse number four, that in four, five, and six, that not only do he feel such a way that is in his bones and also in his soul, that he can feel the distance that's away from him. He can feel the separation that is between him and God because it is that separation that happens when we sin against God. See, the Bible tells us for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So David understands that when he sins that the holy God cannot function in that area that God can't be upon him because of his sin. Now David is one that we know knows how to repent unto the Lord. But David knows that some sins has consequences. That God has placed the consequence of that sin upon you. And God will punish you because of that sin. Because you are his child and you are who he has called sanctified, separated. And now you have gone against him. You have been disobedient. And David understood that. Not only did David understood that in verse number five, he tells him, Lord, don't, don't let me die. Don't, don't let me go on. Like, there is no praise in you in soul, in hell. There is no praise in you. Because see, David didn't have the understanding of the gospel as we have it today. See, David didn't understand death totally. And that's a powerful thing I want to bring up with you all. See, David wasn't a Bible scholar, but David practiced what he knew. You see, a lot of times we thinking that we have to know everything about the Bible in order to follow God. No, follow him with what you know. It says grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. You see, David was before the cross. So... David had no idea about all of our suffering, all of our sins, and all of the wrath would be poured out upon Jesus at the cross. So, but David just felt that this sin, whatever it was, this is not the sin of Bathsheba or anything, that's later on, but this sin, he knew that he couldn't feel God's presence in his life. Not only that, the sin was in such a way that he couldn't grab hold to the presence of the Lord. And with that, he just felt like he's going to die. And he continued on to the end of the Psalms, began to plead out unto the Lord. He began to cry out unto the Father. You see, he he began to let to thank God for uh, hearing him, and not only hearing him, he began to, as God began to uh, uh, refresh him, and he began to uh, uh, let God know that uh, uh, let this be in front of my those that were my enemies that 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 wanted to oppress me down because they saw how it hurt me so bad, and they talked about me that God was no longer gonna be able to be. <laughs> he said. He continued to praise the Lord. Listen, y'all. Our obedience unto God grows on a day-to-day -day basis as we learn and grow in the Word of God. And as we learn and grow in the Word of God by the study of the Word, by the hearing of the Word, by the experiences that we go through by way of the word. In other words, any situation that we have in life, we should try to see what thus says the Lord about it. Instead of trying to run to the next door neighbor, instead of trying to run
over here to the deacons. Listen, first run to God. Open up your word. See what God says about the situation. See the different examples of the situation in the word of God. And, and then meditate on it. Ask God what he wants you to do. And see if there's not a revelation that appears to you only, not only just through the word, the hearing of the word, or even somebody will confirm a thing that you have already learned by your studying of the word. You see? But your obedience is the signal. It is the sign of your love for God. You see, if you love him, you will obey him. You will hear him. You will listen unto him. You will heart unto the Lord. And it's, I know it is a difficult thing at times. Because sometimes what you feel like doing, it ain't what God wants you to do. What you want to do don't match up with the word telling you what to do. I know sometimes it's difficult. I know sometimes it's hard. But listen, when God is pruning you, when he's trying to correct some things in us, when he's trying to shape and mold us into what he wants us to be, it's going to hurt a little bit. But at the end, it's going to be fruitful. Because he's preparing you for the next stage. See, <clears throat> if you don't get the next stage, then <clears throat> it's because you didn't want to be shaped and molded for that stage. You wanted the thing the same way. But without the shaping of it, then it does no good to put you in the next stage because you won't be able to maintain that stage. And that's a powerful thing. Well, we're so grateful and thankful that you all were here with us today. And we just love the fact that we had an opportunity to walk and chat. Well, chat and walk. <laughs> Yeah, we had that opportunity. And we want you to give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. As well as leave a comment. Let us know the, the struggles with obedience that you have. Let us know how it's hard to even obey. Because it's hard for you to even listen to what God is saying because you want to do the way you want to do it. Listen, put down how following God enhanced the situation or circumstance, how it gave light to the solution. All right? And then we want you to share the video. Share it with your family, friends, and loved ones by going to the ARC, A-R-K of O-F, the T-H-E, Covenant, C-O-V-E-N-A-N-T, Ministry, M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y, the number two, and you'll see our symbol there is blue with a hand on top, hand underneath, holding words that says, being an instrument used by God to reach those that cannot reach up. And then we want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right? Father God, we're so thankful and so grateful, Lord, for your word. Lord, we're grateful for your chastisement. Father God, it confirms that we belong to you. And Lord, we prove our love by how we obey you. Lord, how we walk with you. Lord, how we adore your word. Lord, that we want to follow your word. And Lord, we're so grateful for that. And Father God, we're asking that you give strength so we can continue to obey. Give strength, Lord, so we can grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Give strength, Lord, so we can recognize when we underneath chastisement. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, we done made it back home. <laughs> and I'm a little sweaty. 
I don't know if I walked that far, but I enjoyed the walk. I just went down to one end and turned around and come back. But remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. Bye-bye.